and they're playing the two dice game, divided by the probability that the two was called up. What's so funny about that? And then, okay, let's make the tree. So what's the first what's the first thing? Either they play the one day dice game or the two dice game. Which one do you want to do? Okay. Two dice game, one dice game. What's the probability of these two things happening? One, two. Probability cannot be more than one. It says they play it about equally often. Half and a half. Now, when you play the two dice game, either a two is called out or not a two is called out, right? And same thing, you play one dice, either the two is called out or not a two is called out. What's the probability of rolling a two when you roll two dice? Think of the sample space. Well, the only way you can get a 2 is a 1 and a 1, right? So 1 out of 36, so this would be 35 out of 36. What's the probability of rolling a 2, which is 1 times? 1, 6, and this would be 5, 6. Now let's answer the question. What is the probability the 2 was called out and you were playing the 2 dice game? Right here. You're playing the 2 dice game, and then you called out 2! 1 half times 1 36 over... The probability that a 2 was called out, now what's the probability a 2 was called out? Well, you can play the 2 dice game and then you call out the 2. Or you can play the 1 dice game and then you call out the 2. What's the probability of that happening? 1 half times 1 6. And then you just compute that number. Why, what's difficult about this? I didn't try it yet. And then number five. Suppose you have two pairs of dice. One pair is fair, but each die of the other pair is weighted so that a six comes up with probability one fourth instead of the usual one six. If you randomly choose one pair of dice, roll them and obtain two sixes, what's the probability you roll the weighted dice? So we're trying to find the probability that we use the weighted dice knowing that got two sixes, so we just write six six for two sixes. Or whatever you want, you can write on the words if you want. So according to the theorem, this is equal to the probability of getting two sixes, and it was weighted, divided by the probability that you got two sixes. Hey, Matthew people, don't forget this one, you guys are all going to see that next week. Okay, so here we go, let's draw the tree. So what's the first thing that can happen? You're either going to pick the fair die or the non-fair dice, right? What's the probability of that happening? You randomly pick, so it will be half and a half. Okay, now if you roll the fair die, either you're going to get two sixes or you don't get two sixes, right? And the same thing with this one. You're going to get two sixes or you don't get two sixes. What's the probability of each one happening? Two fair dice. What's the probability of getting two sixes? Come on, let's get it back. Huh? One out of 36, right? And then what about this one then? 35 over 36. What about when you're rolling the not fair dice? Because it says the probability of rolling the six is one fourth. One sixteen, fifteen sixteenths. So, what's the probability you roll two sixes and you use the weighted dice? Which is the weighted dice? That's this one here, yeah? So, one half and then two sixes. So, that would be. 1 half times 1 16 divided by the probability that you roll two sixes. Well, you can roll the weighted dice and you got that, so that's 1 half times 1 16. Plus, another way you could have got two sixes is you roll a fair die, dice, and then you get two sixes, so that would be 1 half times 1. Do you see how it works, though? It's kind of easy, you just got to do it one or two times. Well, yeah, this is the part. Those are just words. Words can't hurt me. What about letters? D. Minus. Did that hurt you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, today we talk about what happens when now we involve money in a game of chance. What are you expected to win or lose every time you play this game? Okay, let's just think of a dumb problem. Somebody think of a dumb problem. Yeah, I'll think of a dumb problem. I'll think of a dumb problem. You roll a die. Okay, roll a die. A 
fair guy. If I don't say anything, you have to assume it's fair, yeah? If you get a prime number, you win, how much money you want to win? Six. Six dollars. If you get the identity element of one, you win four. Four dollars. However, if you roll a composite number, which is the four or the six, you will lose. How much you want to lose? Negative three. What? Six. How can you lose negative three? That means you're winning. <laughs> Five dollars then. Would you play this game? No. So, if okay, what we want to do is we want to compute what we call expected value. That means every time you play this game, what are you expected to win or lose? So if it's a positive number, then that's good because every time you play the game, you're expected to win something. But of course, you go to Las Vegas, your expected value is always negative, right? That's how they make money. Yeah. Okay, so how do you compute expected value? It's quite simple. All you have to do is compute the probability of each thing happening. What's the probability of rolling a prime number when you roll one die? What are the prime numbers? Let me write, let me write that down for you because some of us don't even know two is a prime number. These are the prime numbers. So what's the probability of rolling either a 2 or a 3 or a 5? Let's just write 3, 6. Okay? That's the probability. And then what you do is you multiply that by what you expect to, I mean, what you're going to win or lose. You win $6. Multiply it by $6. What's the probability of rolling a 1? 1, 6. What's going to happen? You win $4. So you multiply it by 4. What's the probability of getting a 4 or a 6? 2, 6. And what's going to happen? You lose $5, so you multiply it by negative 5. You add up these things, this is what expected value is. You just multiply each probability by what you're going to win or lose, and then sum it. That is expected value. So let's compute this. Now, if you were to compute this like for the test, because you're going to have like, two problems on this, what are you going to do? What would you do? What would you do? If I were me, I would just make the least common denominator, what goes on the top? 18 plus 4 minus 10. 22 minus 10? 12. 12 over 6, which is 2. So every time you play this game, you're expected to win $2. You would be stupid if you didn't play this game, right? You play this game 100 times, you're expected to win $200. But like I said, in real life, when you go to Las Vegas, your expected value is always negative. So that's why when you go to Las Vegas, you just, you just go there to have fun. Don't expect to make money. This doesn't work like that. Okay, now let's look at a more real-life problem. Okay, this problem is okay, but that's, that's just to show you the concept of expected value. Let's do a carnival problem. Now, see, you guys are juniors. You guys do the model out of food, right? Yeah. Yeah, but see, every time I teach this, it's always during, right before family fair, and it's too late. Because how much more, who, is anybody on the model sauna committee? What's ma what's a malasada? <laughs> how much do you guys even have any idea how much money you guys make? No. You're on the committee. Uh, no. That sounded like a guess. <laughs> huh? Okay, so if you work the most, you work your shift. How much money are you gonna get? How much money divided by the number? $50,000. The fair makes $850,000. Oh, I mean the whole fair. Yeah. But what about just the malasadas? <laughs> okay, because every year, because making malasadas is a lot of work, right? So every year I show them this game. Play this game instead. You can make more money. Okay, so we're going to play this game. And make, this is going to be on the test, by the way. Okay, I'll pay attention now. Okay, let's make, let's draw this to scale. So. Is there a game at the fair where you just toss coins? Yes. And then if it lands on like in a certain area, completely in an area, yeah. then you win? Yeah, the ring game. Like yeah, but see, that game is junk. Yeah, because the isn't it you toss dimes or something? Yeah. yeah. Wait, we got rid of that. <laughs> okay, now it's time to bring it dimes. back, people. Oh, yeah, that's what but see, well, the game they had, what was the design they had? Didn't the design they had, had was something like this? 
star. Right? Yeah, yeah it was like a star or something. And it's so hard to get the coin exactly in there. So who wants to even play that game? Yeah, so here, I'm going to show you a better game. Okay, so this is 36 by 36 inches. So here. Woo! Woo! We are randomly going to toss a quarter in this region. Okay, now what do you want the region to be? You want it to be a circle, a square, whatever? What do you want it to be? A square? Okay, now how big a square? Now, if you make the square only one by one, who's going to even want to play this game, right? Because it's so hard to get the quarter. We're going to toss the quarter, not a dime. So you've got to make it enticing enough so people to, for people to come, but you can't make it so easy that everybody wins, right? So do you want to make the square like this? No. No. Because you want to, ultimately, this is a fundraiser, right? You want to make money for your class. So how big a square do you want to make it? Like 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4? 5 by 5. 5 by 5? Okay, let's think of 5 by 5. <laughs> so there's 5. You want 5 by 5? Here's 5 by 5. Woo! 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 <laughs> okay. Is that enticing? Would you play this game? Randomly toss a quarter in there. If the quarter goes, and it has to be completely in that region, not just partially in there. Now we're going to assume the diameter of a quarter is one inch. We're just going to make that assumption. I think it's pretty close. Okay, so if I randomly toss a quarter into here, now we are assuming that it's landing in this region. We have to make certain assumptions, yeah? What is the probability that it lands in this region? Now a lot of people think, and I'm sure some of you are going to do this on the test because that happens every year. 36 by 36. They go, oh, that's easy. It's just the area of that divided by the area of that. Wrong! Minus 6. That's because a quarter has area. If you were just tossing darts, see, dart is just like a point, right? Yeah. Then the answer would be 25 over 36 squared. But we're tossing a quarter. A quarter has area to it. <clears throat> so now that I told you that, what's the probability that if you randomly toss a quarter, it's going to fall into this region right here completely? I'll give you a hint. Where does the center of the quarter have to land? In order to be completely within this region, where does the center of the quarter have to three land? By three. Well, if we assume the diameter of a quarter to be one inch, what? Four by four. Four by four. Yeah, it has to be a four by four square, right? Because it has to be like, you know, half an inch in, right? 4 by 4. And again, if we assume that it's going to completely be within here, it's, we're talking about a 35 by 35 square, right? You guys understand the concept? This is on the test, that's why. So if I randomly toss a quarter in there, the probability that it completely lands in that region is 20, what did I just say? 4 by 4, 16 over 35 squared. You guys understand? Because a quarter has area, so you look at the center of the quarter. So probably in the test, we'll make it a half dollar or something. All hell is going to break loose. Or change it to a circle. So this is the probability that it lands in there. So what's the probability that it doesn't land in that region? One minus, one minus that. So 1 minus 16 over 35 squared. So this is the probability that you win. This is the probability you lose. OK, so what are we going to offer as a prize? Donut. Donut. Donuts. <laughs> No, you want a gigantic teddy bear. You like see that bear right there? We want like five times that size. It's a gigantic teddy bear. It's gigantic. It's so big, it's like hanging from the rafters and everybody's going, I want, I want to get that for my girlfriend. <laughs> I would get that from my boyfriend. Okay, now we gotta figure out, okay, how much does this thing cost though? How much does this gigantic teddy bear cost? Well, if we get it from Taiwan or Korea, we can get it pretty cheap, right? Or Philippines. How much do you think something like this costs? What do you think? Plus shipping. $30? No way, that's how much you sell it in the store. We're talking Taiwan and Korea before. 40 cents. They're like $10. To, to ma actually yeah. manufacture it? No, like we buy them in bulk and they're actually kind of expensive. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you're in that business? Uh, I'm like cleaning so much hair. Like cleaning the prizes. So a gigantic pair costs $10? Yeah, or like the super big ones. 
that we like put on top of the rack. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, I thought. Because we don't buy that many. Because like, ideally. They That's just for show then. Ideally. No, but we're, 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 we we want to give it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's just say you win ten dollars. Let's say it costs ten dollars. Okay, so do you do I multiply it by ten dollars? No, move spread. You multiply it by nine dollars and seventy-five cents because you lost your quarter, right? To the quarter, you don't get the quarter. Back. Do you get your quarter back? I don't think so. Okay, now what happens if you lose? Well, you lost your quarter, right? So if you add these two things together, this is your expected value. Okay, somebody, we need somebody to compute that on your calculator or iPad. Well, you got the iPad on it, then you reach for your calculator. <laughs> oh, really? What is your expect? Every time you play this game, you're expected to lose how much? Because if you are, if you make the expected value positive for the the customer, you're gonna lose money. We want to make money for scholarships, right? Or your senior camp next year and stuff like that. So what? The rest of you, not the Sony sub, just stare. Takaki. Sasaki. Are you? Point one two. Can somebody confirm that? He's right. Negative point one one nine. Yep. Okay, one one nine. Okay. So how many? Okay. So over the course of the two days of the family fair, let's say people who have played this game how many times? A million well, times. times. Let's say a million times. You play a million times. You know how much money you're gonna make? Around $119,000 just for that one game. But that's assuming, see, in the previous years, we didn't, we, I thought a bear costed only like $5 or something. This is Taiwan or Korea. Okay, whatever. But you, can you see, you still make a lot of money. Because, okay, whatever. So, if I change, what if I change it a little bit, like on the test, like, what if instead of a square, like last year, I think I made a hexagon or something? Is that going to throw you off? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, guess, I guess it's going to throw you off. What if I make an equilateral triangle? No, that's what I did last year. Equilateral triangle. Root 3 over 4, S squared, right? <laughs> <laughs> Three times. Yo, yeah, but Mr. Park, how can you play a million games if you only have this one table right here? See, a 36. No! You want a lot of people to come, so what you do is you have a 36 by 36 thing, and then you 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 make plenty of them. You know what I'm talking about? You just have a whole, it fills the whole tent, because everybody's swarming, they're swarming like flies. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? There's plenty of them. And then, you got to make sure it's random. You cannot, you cannot make the surface like AstroTurf or something where people can aim. you got to make sure it's random. So what can you do to make it random? Tilt. Tilt it. Polish it. You just polish it. You polish it. You make it slippery. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so if the tabletop is slippery, you can't really aim it, right? Like adjust it. So you're telling me, okay, if I'm tossing a quarter for me on, onto your desk, which is kind of slippery, I, can, I could actually aim it where it lands. Kind of, but you have to make it random, otherwise it's, it's going to spoil the whole thing. So that's why you got to make sure it's all slippery and shiny. Anyway, this is expected. This is the last lecture. You have two of these on the test, six points each, because you got to do more work than a regular. Because you not only got to compute probabilities, you got to multiply it by how much you're going to. Does everybody understand this 975? It is not 10 because you actually lost the quarter that you threw in. That's going to come up in today. Okay, we're done. Class uh, ends in one minute. Hey, wait. Oh, wait, Jordan. Jordan, you don't need to do this. Do we need them?